It's all good. It's all good. That's what Vandersloot has to say. That's video from ABC's 2020 of Vandersloot emotionless, emotionless, and he's describing what happened the night How Natalie went missing. With me here on the set is a lady that has been an inspiration to thousands of people. Uh, not only has she never given up in the search for justice for her daughter, Natalie Holloway, but she is now a tireless victim's rights advocate. With me tonight, Beth Holloway. This is Natalie's mother. We are taking your calls live. Beth, thank you for being with us. Thank you, Nancy. All the Do you ever just get completely worn out with talking about this? Does, does it rake up the coals every time you talk about it? Oh, I, I'll be honest, Nancy. There, there was a time when I tell you, it just I felt like, how can I continue to do this? And, and where am I going? And what, what, am, I, what am I getting? I, I just felt like I wasn't getting anywhere. But you know what? All that steady, constant, everyday steps that we took, each one was well worth it because look where we are today. I never thought I'd see this time come to where you and I would be sitting here with such absolutely amazing revelations and informations, you know, coming from Iran himself. When DeVries told you he had new evidence, did he tell you what it was or did he just fly you over there and you saw it for the first time? Because I saw the yeah. video of you seeing it for the first time. Yeah. And you were so composed. I, I, I believe that you had to know something because you were so composed as you were watching. Well, what he did was he, he kind of, it, it was great how he presented this. I mean, he first just contacted me initially yeah. and just asked me to come. You know, no questions asked. And I just said, when do you want me there? And then the next thing he did, which, which really was great, is he sat me down and explained to me about what I was going to see. He didn't just oh, hit it with good. me. He really did it in the utmost professional manner possible. And I just think he just respected, uh, you know, me as an individual and, and what I was about to hear. And so he did a step-by-step -step process, and then we went into the actual viewing of the video. So I knew what I was going to see. He prepared me well for what I was about to see, but of course you still can't get the full scope of it because now I was able to see it and hear it. Exactly. But he, did a, he was very considerate in how he presented it. I've just got to ask you, you know more than anybody, and I recall you and I talking, oh gosh, now, over a year ago, and you know so much more than the rest of us know about the investigation. What are the inconsistencies that you have seen in his various stories? I mean, I know he started off by telling you I dropped her off at the Holiday Inn. Then he said, told somebody else he had sex with her on the beach. Then he said we just caressed and she had convulsions and then she just died. There are so many inconsistencies. There are, but now that we've been able to hear these stunning admissions from Iran, we've been able to go back now and we can corroborate with some of the things that he's admitting to Patrick, the informant in the car. We can bring it full circle and we can go back to the very beginning because it's absolutely amazing some of the things that Iran is saying and admitting the condition that Natalie was in. I mean, it's stunning that 48 Watching hours... Herself. Into Natalie's disappearance, I was asked by an Aruban um, detective if Natalie has a history of seizures or epilepsy. And when and when I'm hearing Yaron say that it looked like seizures. Natalie was having a seizure, and then he even what makes me sick, and I want to come through this screen and kill him when he imitates her. He imitates her as she's suffering. Um, that's um, in a video clip with Patrick. I didn't see that. Yeah, there's one where he does. I watched the whole uh, 2020. Oh, I'm sorry. Was there, it on yeah, the there Dutch some, version? Yeah, I'm sorry. Some, you mean he mocked her? He yeah. imitated her having seizures? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so he not only verbalizes it, it, he I imitates it visually. So there was, yeah, there was, there were some clips that I saw in the Netherlands, perhaps that may not have been on Twitter, right. because there was a lot. Yeah, I mean, they drove around for days and days and days. Right. And what we saw were portions of all these days put together when he was talking about Natalie's death. Right. And I'm so glad you brought that up when you began your show, is that this was not one instance where Yaron uh, gave this admission to Patrick. As you said, this was repeatedly over time, this, the same specific details. So you... you reiterated that, you know, make it clear that this was not just a one-time admission from Iran. A one-time high as a kite right. confession. No, that's he some... maintained this over a period of months. Correct. Um, so what you just pointed out is very important. At the very, very beginning, police asked you, 
does Natalie have a history of epilepsy or seizures? Right. And you didn't know why they were asking. Do you now, no. in retrospect, believe that Jorn Vandersloot told police that at the beginning? Well, I, you know, when you look at the facts, it's it's pretty stunning that, and, I, and uh, when you have an investigator who asks you that question within the first 48 hours, and when we go back, there weren't any, there were no other medical questions. I mean, he didn't say, does Nellie have diabetes or does Nellie have, you know, other medical issues. That was Why the only one. Why would police one. have kept that from you? That was the only one. And they only asked me once and I told them no, but they asked Jug. They asked him probably about a dozen times. And Jug had to come to me at least half a dozen times and I'd say, no, why no, do you no keep history. asking me that? Out to the lines. Karen in Nevada. Hi, Karen. Hi, Hi Nancy. You are a gift from God. Thank you. Would you tell the defense bar that, please? Thank you. <laughs> What's your question, dear? I have a comment and then a question. I don't have a camcorder, but I would like to nominate Dave and Beth Holloway for um, yes, um, parent. Extraordinary Parents by proxy from Natalie. Mm -hmm. And my question is, since the Calpo brothers were also last seen with her, and they lied initially that they had dropped her off, what do you think their motive was for lying in the beginning if they had no 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 part in this whatsoever. You know, that's a really good point, Karen, in Nevada, because many people believe that Jorn Vandersloot's confession on videotape completely exonerates the Calpo brothers. Uh, but she's right. They did lie and say they dropped her off at the Holiday Inn. Well, several things come to mind when I think about that. And one, we have to go back to that Satish and Yaron were in the Carlos and Charlie's with Nellie. So we know that Iran was in, we know that these individuals were in charge of Natalie's drinks, they bought Natalie's drinks, they paid for Natalie's drinks, so we can't help but wonder if the drug, the GHB, perhaps was given to her by one of them at that moment. And secondly, Yaron, um, during his conversations with Patrick, I think this kind of sums it up. They, when they, when Yaron got together with Deepak and asked, reached out to him to help him stick, establish that a holiday and drop off, he even states that he, there was one thing that Yaron was mad about, was he had no idea, and he used some very explicit terms to describe Natalie, the F and B word and all that. I her a bitch and a whore. But yes. the biggest, and, the, and he also said the biggest problem is he had no idea the magnitude. He had no idea that, that, that you know, the F and mother would never shut up and would never, would have brought this so global. They had no idea what they were stepping into, Nancy. They were stepping into no idea. We'll be right back, it. everyone, with us taking your calls live. Natalie's mom, Beth Holloway. Yeah, he's hurt us tremendously, other families tremendously, and, and some innocent people of Aruba. Uh, he has no remorse, no uh, a total disregard for anyone else except for himself, even his own family. And uh, it's, it's just shocking to me that uh, someone could do this. It's just uh, I, I'm still reeling from it.